it certainly will. But back to the job in hand as far as all these players are concerned, and that's getting through these second round encounters and progressing further and further in this million US dollar Victor Korea Open for 2012. Well, as far as Lee Yong Day is concerned, he's won a Korean Open title. There he is. He's won a title here on home soil at the Korean Open for five straight years. That means he started winning titles here when he was just 18 years of age. Isn't that extraordinary? Well, there, confirmation that he and his partner are not seeded. Current world ranking of 12 from their win-loss record for last year. In case you're thinking that's not very many. Well, they didn't play many tournaments together. Only 13 tournaments because at the start of the year they were both playing with different partners. Ha Jong-un, 24 years of age. My partner is only 23. And of course Ha Jong-un used to play mixed doubles with a man we've just seen in the men's doubles. Sung Hyung. They were successful, they were too, reached the final of the year in England a couple of years ago as qualifiers. So to their opponents and Shintaro Ikeda, number eight in the world rankings, but not actually seeded here. And their win loss record last year translates into reaching two finals, the German Open and the Russian Open. Both of those Grand Prix events, but they qualified for the Super Series finals and reached the semi-final of the Super Series final so had a great end of year and the extraordinary thing about uh, both the japanese players and they're both bronze medalists from world championships in level doubles back in 2007 ikeda won his bronze medal with sakamoto and shiroto won her gold her, her bronze medal with okora but since then both of their doubles partners have retired from international competition and therefore they took up the mixed doubles and Ian is it fair comments or perhaps I'm being a little harsh to say that it took them a little while to really develop into mixed doubles pairs because I mean I thought that they were both so successful in in level doubles but they didn't seem to enjoy success in mixed doubles initially when they teamed up together no neither of them had played two events they both concentrated on level doubles and it certainly took them some time to adjust and you would have to say that their combination is a little bit special. It's a little bit different to some, most of the traditional mixed pairs we see. And that stems from the fact that they both you know, were level double specialists for many, many years. Well, the umpire and service judge, I can tell you, have been changed from the official list. And that's maybe because matches on adjoining courts have been changed. I can actually tell you that it's Eddie Rodolfianco and David Turner once again. They were on the last match and on duty again here in our second televised match. Well, as far as the Koreans are concerned, they had a first round victory over their teammates, the qualifiers, Yu Yong Sung and Jang Yun Na. Two straight games, but it was tough two games, 22-20, 24-22. As far as the Japanese pair, what a wonderful result they had yesterday in the first round against the number six seeds from Thailand, Sukip Prabrakamal and Sarali Thonka. That one in two straight games as well. And the umpire just announcing the players to the crowd. The home fans will need no interruption to the long day. And so it is just short of the mark. Now, we were noticing that Ha jung -ung at the Super Series Finals in Luzhou was struggling with her low serve. She was playing women's doubles, of course. Yes, yes, certainly uh, seems to have a, seems to have lost confidence on short service over the last couple of months. That's sure. It'll be really interesting to see uh, see how she goes in this game. 
Yeah, also interesting, I guess, because this is the third meeting between the two pairs, and the previous two encounters have both been won by the Koreans. Both of those previous matches last year, and both in quarter-final stages. Danish Open and US Grand Prix, of course. With the Koreans going on to win that US Grand Prix title, they obviously won that encounter. I think in general terms in this arena with the drift, physicality is going to come into every encounter, isn't it? Yes, you would expect so. This is a really interesting match though, Jill, you know, in a lot of, for a lot of different reasons. These are two pairs over the last six months who've had a st steady climb up the world rankings. And uh, with six months, six or seven months left of the Olympics, they're two pairs who I think will be really looking to be very competitive. Certainly the Japanese two. player brings something different to the game. We've already seen a couple of rallies where Shiotta's perfectly happy to stay off the net position, go to the rear court, very strong there from a level double days. We've seen an example here of and Day how he's happy to go into the net position. So we've got two slightly different, different mix styles in this uh, in this matchup. We see it, perfectly happy to move in and take the net position as he would in his doubles partnership. This Korean combination did actually play together. 2005. And apart from the US Grand Prix event that they won last year, their only other title as a pair, Mongolian International, back in 2005, when Lee was only 16 years of age. Yep, fairly classic from the Koreans. They like to go and play um, challenger events with their junior teams rather than the more traditional route of playing junior, junior world circuit tournaments. The Koreans like to get the young players into senior tournaments early, so they start slightly lower down the, the ranking of tournaments, and they like the challenging tournaments for the young players, and they're still doing that today, and getting some very good results just before Christmas in the European Challenger events that are taking place in December. Well, you can't argue with their success and the way they've brought players through. It's uh, obviously seems to be a very good route. Yeah, no, I remember seeing Mark Hewitt in the Welsh Open as a young 13-year-old singles player. I'm sure it's very good. <laughs> In, of course, now married to one of our colleagues just sitting down to the right of us, Kim Dong Moon. They certainly were living in Canada, are they still living and coaching in Canada? No, Rocky Min's uh, accepted a job over here, she's come back and is uh, coaching for our old team actually. And uh, she's head coach of one of the biggest clubs over here.
struggling with this low serve. So early on to those half court pushes, isn't he? Brings his base further up the court, Lee on gate. Yeah, we'll see it here. Hits one smash and immediately moves forward, takes the next shuttle. Even earlier, gives his opponents very little time to get into a defensive position. Seem to change his mind. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. Super low serve. That's your aggressive low serve, isn't it? Yeah, that's a great serve. Well placed as well. Game interval. Time combination with a four point advantage. Better organized mixed doubles pair, don't they? The Koreans to me in these even in these early stages, they, they look far more comfortable with each other. Whereas you sort of think that the Japanese pair already are sort of been pulled out of position one or two occasions. Yeah, Japanese pair tend to play that style though, don't they? They play a very mobile game. What they do do is they keep their intensity very high. So if the Koreans at any stage just drop the level slightly and you know this Japanese pair will be there and they'll, they'll find a way of getting into the game. They're a very combative, uh, competitive team. They really fight very, very hard and although sometimes it doesn't look very pretty, they're very effective. Mm. Point in case. Or case in point, rather. <laughs> from Shiotta, setting it up for a partner, and he finds the space well. No! Terrific angle. Yeah, set up for his partner, his partner takes the pace off. That creates time for and day to get into position and he places the shuttle so well doesn't waste any energy there it's more about placement than power oh clever what were you saying about change of pace beautiful yeah, the opposite this time, it's Lee Young Day driving the Japanese into deep defensive positions. And it's, it's his partner taking the pace off and using the space that's been created. Good teamwork. Oh, they're just signs, aren't they? The last serve was a flick serve. That's a short serve in the net. 
Well, that's at least three errors on low serve. Oh, how did she get that back? Shiota has to smile at that. Goodness me, early on there was a defensive shot from Ha Jong Un that was absolutely extraordinary. And that rally just showing how difficult it is to get the shuttle on the ground. That's nice. Yeah, stands tall here. Partner serves short. Shot a quick to anticipate. Mid court push. Nice block. idea on execution trying to just clip the shuttle down seem to run out of ideas there. Okay, that. Yeah, that movement. That, that's a beautiful example, isn't it? The Japanese pair, the two players spread wide apart from each other in the court, whereas the Koreans seem to be moving in unison. Such a good understanding. Serve again. Have to say. A few words of encouragement, I think, from a partner. One or two signs that the Japanese pair are getting a little bit frustrated. They're drawn into a fast flat game with Hyundai is probably not the way for them to go. No. Oh, 
string's gone in his racket. Yeah, that's why he made the error. Yeah, bit unlucky that. Created the opportunity. Just turns 31, there's Ikeda. So 19-12, opening game. Oh, that's well played. Yeah, this is good. Sign of the confidence he's got in his partner. Prepared to fully commit in the net position. Gracious. Well, I suppose it wasn't the tightest of net shots, but how well Ha Jong Un read the situation here. He's moving forward. And to a certain degree, you create your own luck. Right position, right time. And it now means that the Koreans have seven game points. It's a tentative serve again. Yeah, good return though from Shiotta. I think Lee Hyundai had anticipated straight return. She turned it back onto his body and forced him to hit the shuttle upwards. Oh, that's clever. Uh, and then he paid up, played them into trouble by playing the cross court net shots. Put away with ease in the end by Lee Yong Day. And that means that Lee Yong Day and Ha Jong Un take the opening game. 21 15 in 19 minutes of play. talked at great length about other players who've been struggling with low serves. Seems to happen an awful lot with the women who play doubles because there is a lot of pressure. It's a very, very important shot, possibly the most important shot. To get a good low serve, it sets up the tone of the rally. You can then hunt the third shot. And from a coach's point of view, what, what do you say to a player? Is it, because it surely all becomes psychological. We all know that they, they technically have got good serves. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, when Har's practicing in the practice hall, she serves perfectly well. No problem at all. It's the match situation. And therefore, as a coach, it's very, very difficult. I mean, it really is, a, as you say, it's a psychological problem. You can involve um, sports psychologists. Very often I've seen one or two strategies that have worked well for players from sports psychologists where they give them routines to follow or uh, they work with some imagery type uh, type routines for them to prepare before matches and during matches 
but once a service goes and once players lose confidence in the service, it, it, it's very, very difficult to turn it around. You know, this is a, the calendar now is 12 months of the year. There's no real time, time away to have a break and to sort yourself out. You're playing week in, week out, and there's a lot of pressure on these players these days. to me because we see that opening rally here of the second game and Ha jung -un very aggressive in her positioning, very aggressive in hunting the shuttle. So you would think that she's got confidence and yet when she's standing to serve, oh, well, that was a nice serve. Perhaps that's going to give her a little more confidence to, to be able to repeat that time and time again. But somehow her whole demeanor looks tentative when she's going to serve where in comparison to the rest of the game she uses confidence yeah but i mean there are situations certainly in matches she's played the last six months where her service has gradually dragged down the rest of her game and uh she's a very very good all-court player very good ladies doubles player top mix player but there are times where uh, when her service has gone the confidence in the rest of the game has also suffered Clever. Yeah, nice play from Ikeda. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's a typical Japanese rally. I mean, they've come back there. They lost the first point in a good classic mid-court mixed rally where the Koreans dominated the mid-court and net position the next rally. Japanese moving the shuttle around, staying in the rally, keeping their margins, keeping the shuttle on the court. They always keep pressure on their opponents. You always have to play well. If you lapse a little bit against this Japanese pair, they'll be there. They'll be there and they'll be scoring points. The Japanese pair, since they took up mixed doubles and started playing together, they've had a whole string of very good results beating the likes that we've already mentioned, Sukit and Sara Lee from Thailand. They've also beaten Li Shen Mu and Chen Yu Chin, who of course were bronze medalists at the 2010 World Championships, beaten Nathan Robertson and Jenny Warwick, highly rated British pair, beaten Robert Matusiak, Nadia Zeba, former world number ones. So they've had very good results, but they've never actually won a tournament. They, they keep improving, they have good results, but they they haven't as yet followed it all the way through to a title. No, but you just have the feeling it's coming, don't you? I mean, as I say, their rise up the ranking has been very steady. Yep. Um, you know, they've made themselves into a very consistent pair. They don't lose bad matches. No. You know, and as I say, they'll play the level in this match, and if the Koreans just lapse a little bit, they'll be there. So they're a very solid pair now, and with seven months, seven, eight months to go to the Olympics, you know, they'll still be looking to get up and get into a seeded position. Only 16 pairs, of course, at the Olympic Games, so will they have eight seeds, two seeds in each group? With the, uh, with the group system, they will. If it was a knockout, they'd just be the four seeds. Yep. But with the uh, group situation, they'll be, they'll be seeding two, two pairs in each group, so... A top eight position, qualifying position, would give you a seeding position. Yeah. And then within the group, div divided four groups of four, of course, and then the top two go through to the knockout stage in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Seeding is very, very important. Well, big difference, huge difference between finishing eighth and ninth, you'd have to say. Yeah. Uh, it will make a huge difference to your chances of going through. So these... Premier events with the extra points are absolutely critical to these types of pairs here. Yeah, very much so. But, of course, we shouldn't forget that when Lee Yong Day won his Olympic gold medal, he qualified at number 10 in the mixed doubles ranking. He did. Again, it was a combination that was uh, created during the qualifying period. They came late onto the scene and uh, <laughs> to very good effect in the end. Yeah. With a little bit of help from the British pair, knocking out the uh, knocking out the seeded pair in the first round. Oh, it's 
so clever. Lovely play from Lee Yong Day. Yeah, great example of the racket work of Lee Yong Day. So good around his body, so quick with his reactions. Able to change the direction almost from anywhere. Nice too. Good rally. Yep, and good pressure from the Japanese pair here. This time they're able to drive the Koreans off this net position. We see the drive there, forcing hard to retreat, and that creates the space. Good play. It's good judgment. Oof, two seventy six. Well, it's his fastest of the day so far, but not the fastest of the day. Two seventy seven, wasn't it, from Ko Sun Hyung? how frustrated she is with that service as you say in general play she's playing really well in this match but just that one weakness I don't wish to put a dampener on things, Ian, but, you know, to win gold medals at Olympic Games, to have one aspect of your game that is such a glaring weakness is... And, and two things just don't really seem to go together, do they? Winning gold medals and not being able to low serve. No, and finally Hyundai won that gold in Beijing. I think he was... Playing with probably the best server. Yes. Li Ho Jung. Li Ho Jung had a fantastic yeah. service. He was so confident in that area of the game. And it, for, the, for the male player, it's so much easier to play behind a good short serve. Mm. Than, you know, even when Ha gets a good serve into play, and Yun Dae's not really ready for it. You know, he's, he's expecting to be on the defense. So even when she gets a good serve, he's maybe not in the best position to take advantage of it. Whereas with his ex-partner, he was always on the front foot. Good serve out wide. Read the situation. Knew what her partner was doing. Looks to be under so much pressure, and all of a sudden turns it around. Yeah, his, his racket work around his body is really quite exceptional here. He's retreating. He's not played a great shot. But he gets out of trouble so well. Well 
played by a Japanese, but just making the error at the crucial time. Oof. Oh, my goodness. I think we hope our own minds out there. Called out. Oh, what a return of serve. Well, that was a good serve. No reward for it. Super net tumble return. Japanese have the advantage. How did he get that back? Didn't just get it back, got it back with interest. Well, all of a sudden, this is very interesting indeed. It's as we've been saying, though, Jill, Japanese sticking to the task, fighting hard, keeping the intensity very, very high. As I say, doesn't always look pretty, doesn't look like traditional mix good intensity good pace really good mobility from both of them and they're right in it Naomi Manuki coach there will be pretty happy with the performance so far here in this second game long it's not the way you want to come out of an interval is it gifting a point to your opponents Japanese gradually getting into more and more trouble during that rally, pulled all over the place, and eventually leaving a huge gap. Yeah, he knows he was outmaneuvered there. Back level. from the crowd as they found the net. Yeah, initially it was very good defence to get the attack to create the attacking opportunity. Tried to hit the angle rather than the pace but just overdid it. Brought it down into the top of the net. Anticipate the drop shot. Quickly into the net. Here we see it. So quick to get in. Change the direction. Again, there wasn't a match. 
much of a gap in between the two Japanese players. It threaded the needle. Yeah, again, no real power. Well, I say that, that's pretty quick, but it's the placement that wins rather than the pace. He really didn't seem to hit that very hard, did he? But that's quick. It certainly is. 164 miles per hour. Thing I always think about this Japanese pair Ian, is how much they seem to enjoy playing. They even when there's an error like that, they look at each other, a little smile, keep encouraging each other. Williams <laughs> now with a two-point cushion. sorts of trouble early on in that rally with the Koreans they turned it around and I have to say in I always love watching Lee on day because he's always playing every rally as if it was the Olympic game medal point such commitment such work ethic absolutely tremendous Center of the court and hard just stepping off, anticipating the interception. Doesn't try and hit it hard, concentrates on bringing it down nice and steeply. Well, from 13 all, five straight points, and it's been a very, very different complexion on this second game, and indeed the match. Oh! And you can see they were 9-11 down at the mid-game interval. It's a good rally again. That's a really good rally. Just have the feeling that Ian Day's enjoying this at the moment. Saw a full repertoire of strokes there. In the end, though, the Japanese were able to survive. As I say, they really are a battling pair, aren't they? Very much so. But that, that's the Japanese style. I think in general, all five disciplines, they're all their athletes great fighters on court, good work ethic. Oh. Yeah. 
good skill. And now six match point opportunities. A shot to try, but I suppose when you're on five match points. <laughs> Second time of asking. And job well done by Leon Day and Harjong. 21-15, 21-15, symmetry in the scoreline. Uh, he's probably the player above all others that the fans here have come to see. Absolutely good start, but you need two pairs to make a good match. And let's not forget that Ikeda and Shiota played their part too. But there's confirmation of the score. 21-15, 21-15 in 41 minutes of play. Well, despite the fact that Vardano struggling to find consistency with her low serve. When they get into the rally, Koreans do look a very polished pair. So victory to them. That sees them through to the quarter-final. And they will play either the Indonesian. In fact, the Indonesians have already played, haven't they? Did the Indonesians win? Yes, he's giving me the thumbs up. Toi Akman and Liliana Mahatsi are the number four seats. That's who Li Yongdae and Ha Jung-ong will meet in the quarterfinal stage tomorrow. So there's confirmation of the two matches we've had so far. Next on court will be women's singles, then we'll have women's doubles, and then the last of our five matches this afternoon. Lee Chong Wei, world number one champion here in 2010, beaten finalists in 2009, left, lost out to a certain Peter Gader, and then lost out in the final last year as well to Lin Dan of China. So three consecutive finals here for Lee Chong Wei at the Korean Open, and I'm sure he'll be wanting to make it four finals in a row at the very least. Of course, perhaps we should mention Peter Gader in the men's singles because, of course, the former champion, Peter Gader, 35 years of age now, he lost in the first round yesterday to do Penyu. But before the women's singles players come onto court, let's just enjoy some of the highlights from that mixed doubles.